Okay, so the last objective we do in chapter seven is objective four. Um, and it has a lot to do with um, how cash is reported and some principles of, of managing it. Okay. Uh, so again, just remember when we, when we say the word cash, uh, the cash account, um, it really is everything that you see here, anything on hand or in deposit in terms of coins, paper money, checks, money orders, et cetera. Uh, that's basically how we define cash. It's always listed first, as you know, in the current asset section. Um, and it includes any cash you have both on hand or on deposit. Uh, petty cash would be cash on hand as well, because we would have that. Um, basically, all those types of things would be cash. However, you probably have heard of cash equivalents. Okay, so cash equivalents are basically easily and readily converted to cash, uh, such as you know money market account, for example. Um, there's also something called restricted cash. And that is when the board of directors uh, restricts the use of cash for a special purpose and puts that money sort of aside. So it's still cash, yes, but it can't be used for anything else other than what the purpose is. And it's called sometimes restricted cash. So some, sometimes you'll, you'll see a balance sheet will have um, cash and cash equivalents, some short-term investments in restricted cash. Uh, listed right up front. And so now you know a little bit more about uh, what those are. Okay. Um, reporting cash, this is this is simply a do it exercise indicating whether things are true or false. Um, and it says here, you know, cash and cash equivalents. So the, it's so all of these are cash except of course NFS checks, um, but cash equivalents would be a lot more than that. So that's why it's false. Uh, restricted class uh, cash rather is, um, uh, is technically uh, a current asset. Um, uh, and so true in this case, a company may have a negative balance in its bank account, uh, no. I mean, you can't take out more money from the bank than what's in it. It's like going in, you have a savings account with a hundred bucks. You go into a, go to the bank and say, I'll, you know, I'm going to take out $200. They're going to look at you like you got three heads, like, but you only got a hundred to take. So you can never have a negative balance in, uh, in the account there. Um, uh, because cash and cash equivalents are short term investments, accounts receivable should be listed first. Of course, we know that's false. So relatively uh, straightforward there. In terms of how companies manage and monitor their cash, of course, cash is very important because they pay everything. Uh, they pay cash is used for almost everything, um, and so it's very important to sort of understand that there are certain principles of cash management. Uh, they want to make sure they're getting cash in quickly, so all those receivables need to be collected on time. Uh, oftentimes they have to pay for inventory, right? So keeping inventory at just the right levels, usually on the lower side, uh, will not tie up cash because you need cash to do other types of things. Uh, make sure you're monitoring liabilities and when you need cash to pay those payments. If there's any type of major expenses coming up in the future where you need a, a higher cash amount to pay it than normal, then that also has to be planned accordingly. Uh, and you should never just have idle cash sitting around. You should always be doing everything you can to, uh, to invest it um, and, and earn interest on that. Um, and that gives us a, a little bit of a look at um, cash budgeting which here cash budgeting just simply looks at three things. How much cash is coming in? cash receipts, how much cash we need to go out, cash disbursements. And if we need more out than in, we need to finance. We need to get some cash. So financing activities there. And that's basically how they sort of break it down. So let's look at this particular example from Hayes 
it's their cash budget for each of the four quarters of their of their fiscal year. Um, Hayes likes to have a minimum of fifteen thousand dollars in its account at all times in terms of cash. Okay, anything below fifteen thousand, they go borrow money for. So here they have, they start the year with $38,000 of cash on the books. Uh, they're gonna have, um, they're gonna collect another 170,000. So they're gonna have $208,000 throughout the first quarter. What do they need? Well, they need $182,500 of that to pay everything based on their inventory and salaries and other expenses. That's how much they need. That means they'll have $25,500 left over which is their ending cash. 25,000 is over that $15,000 limit that they're looking at, so that's fine. So in the second quarter, that's their starting cash. The ending cash for the first quarter is the starting cash for the second quarter. Uh, they're gonna have another $198,000 of cash coming in, so a total of $223,500 of cash for that quarter. They need $211,500 in cash for all their disbursements because they're, it looks like they're buying a truck among other things, right? So <clears throat> that would leave them with $12,000 difference, which is a little bit too low for them. They like to have at least 15,000 in their account. So they will go ahead and borrow $3,000 um, and have a $15,000 bank account balance that they want. That becomes their starting uh, bank account balance in uh, in the third quarter. They add their receipts. That gives them a total amount of cash that they have. This is how much cash that they need, their disbursements, how much cash they need. Uh, they have a difference of $22,500, which is quite high. So they can pay back that loan <clears throat> that they borrowed here with interest and still have $19,400 of cash left over that quarter, which is higher than the 15, so they're fine. And they bring that forward in the fourth quarter. <clears throat> this is how much cash they're gonna have to receipt. So this is the total amount of cash that's available to them to use. They need this much cash for disbursements, giving them a lot of extra cash. So that's gonna be their final ending balance. So this might be something uh, that you're gonna be looking at uh, but in a, in a shorter form, such as what's listed here on the do it exercise. So here you have this company always want to maintain a $15,000 balance. <clears throat> they always want to maintain that. And in this case, they're looking at the month of March. They start with a $16,500 balance. That's what's listed here. They have cash receipts for 210000 so when you add it together, that's the total amount of cash that they have for March. However, they need $220,000 of cash to pay all of its bills, et cetera. So that means they're only gonna have $6,500 left, which is too low. They wanna keep a uh, $15,000 balance at the end of the month. So they will go ahead and borrow the difference. And that is something you're going to see as well in your homework, but I think it sort of makes sense as we go through kind of step by step. Okay. All right. So any questions on that?